In the first part of this video, we have introduced forces as physical quantities. Physical quantities that have a definition, a value, a unit, and a mean of measurement. And we also have introduced the newtometer or spring balance or force meter as the instrument that we can use to measure forces. At this point, we're going to see what is the unit of measurement of force and we're going to see how we can distinguish between one spring balance and another and choose the most appropriate tool for our measurements. So, in the international system of units, uh, the one we normally is also called the metric system because it all started with a meter as the unit for length, um, and which is also the most widespread, as, as it says, the international system of units, in this system, uh, the unit of measurement for force is called the Newton. And that shouldn't come as a surprise since Isaac Newton is, to some extent, the father of uh, classical physics, the physics we're doing right now. Okay, but I want you really to, to uh, focus on how this is written. Um, so when we're writing the name of a unit that comes from the name of a scientist, and this will be... Uh, not the last is instance when this happens. Um, we'll find the joule or joule, we'll find the watt, the volt, etc. And in all these cases, what we the choice has been that if you write the name of a scientist, of course, you're going to capitalize the first letter. But if you're writing full the unit, okay, you need to keep it lowercase, all lowercase, as you can see. All right. On the other hand, when you're going to write it as an abbreviation, which is what we're going to do most of the time. Uh, so, for instance, I want to say that the force is equal to 10 newtons. OK, I'm going to just write it with a capital N. As I said before, uh, we might find ourselves in a situation where we have different tools that make the same type of measurement. For instance, different type, different uh, spring balances. And how can you tell which one is the most appropriate for our measurement? The two key things you have to look is what we call range and precision. And first I'm going to tell you what range and precisions are, and then we're going to see a practical example with a spring balance. So range, range, is the interval between the smallest and the biggest value that your instrument can measure. So, the smallest number and the biggest number. And normally, if your instrument has a scale in it, okay, you just have to look at what is the smallest number there, what is the biggest number, and that interval is what we call the range, okay? And that is really important because you cannot measure something which is smaller than your smallest value, although in many cases that will be zero, but not always. And you cannot measure something which is bigger than the end scale, the biggest number on your scale, okay? You won't get a, a, a real value. The second parameter you have to look is precision. Precision, as you can already imagine, is something related to really how small can you go and indeed the precision is the smallest smallest change in value that your instrument can measure let's make another example let's think about a ruler okay a normal ruler which could be no let's say 30 or 20 centimeters long in that case in that case uh, your range will be and let's make an, an example here okay um, will be the interval between zero, basically every ruler starts from zero, to the maximum length of your ruler. In that case, will be like 20 centimeters or 30 centimeters. That will be your interval. And you can see how the interval is written as an interval, indeed. Huh? Um, a dash between the lowest number and the biggest number, and don't forget the units. Now, if you take a normal school ruler, what will happen? What is the smallest change in value? You have to look at what is the smallest division on your scale. And that normally corresponds to one millimeter. So the precision of your ruler will be one millimeter. But with a ruler, it's quite simple to figure out what is the range and what is the precision. 
it's more challenging to see what these values are in the case of a spring balance. So in the next segment of this video, we're going to see how we can find these two values in a spring balance. So here we have some spring balances. Okay, we saw what a spring balance is, how it works, and now our question is why we have this difference? Why are these diff um, called in a different way? The answer is in the range and precision of these spring balances. Okay, so now we're going to see how we can find out what is the range and the precision of a spring balance. But to do that, we need to take a closer look. So, let's focus now on this spring balance. You can see we have two scales, one that's marked in kilograms and one which is marked in newtons. Now, we're going to focus on the one in newtons because that's, that is the um, international system of units, unit for force. Okay, now the range of course is normally the easiest thing to figure out because as you remember the range is the interval between the smallest and the biggest uh, value that your tool can measure. And you can see my scale starts from zero, so that will be the first part of our interval and goes all the way to 50. So for this spring balance the range will be between 0 and 50 newtons. How about the precision? As we know, precision is the smallest change in value in our, uh, inst that our instrument can measure. And normally, that corresponds to the smallest division, uh, the smallest interval that I have on my scale. So at this point we need to zoom in a little bit more like this, okay? And now let's look at the very beginning of our scale. We have the first value which is 0, the next value is 5. So this interval corresponds to 5 newtons, but as you can see it's also have been divided into five smaller intervals. So, you can easily understand that each one of these small intervals is equal to five divided by five. So, each one of these small intervals corresponds to one Newton. So, for this um, spring balance, the range will be from zero to 50 and the precision will be one Newton. And just to show you a different example, let's take this other spring balance, the green one, okay? And let's see if it is different from a point of view of a range and precision. So let's zoom in again. And as you can see here, again, we start from zero, but the end of the scale is five. So the range of this spring balance is from zero to 5 newtons. How about the precision? So again, let's zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so you can see now that after the zero, the first value it's 0 0.5 or just 0 0.5. And again, we have uh, here this interval divided in five smaller intervals. So again, we can apply our math and we can say that the smallest interval here corresponds to 0 0.5 divided by 5, which makes 0.1 newtons. So the range of this spring balance is from 0 to 5 newtons, and the precision is 0 0.1. And this is really interesting because this is um, a very clear pattern we get normally with um, instruments of measurement because what happens if you have something which has a big range like this one this usually goes at the expense of the precision so you have a bigger range but you have a worse precision in this case on the other hand you have a much better precision but that goes at the expense 
off the range.